Hi everyone, it is Robert and E Chip. How's it going? If you haven't seen us before, we are Contentment Channel and we're a middle aged couple out living the off grid dream. <laughs> an update video to let you know what's been going on here on the homestead uh, we've been, been kind of busy uh, we've been slowed down a little bit uh, with uh, you know needing to order things parts and then many of you know that we uh, suffered a, a theft here a while back which you know uh, took away a lot of the things a lot of the materials for things that we had already planned so there's been some financial catching up with that uh, but I, I think we're just about there and um, ready to move on to the things that we actually had planned for uh, this summer at Contentment. Mm -hmm. so. We had our first friendly fire here. One of our neighbors gave us um, his old metal stove fireplace from his actual burned out cabin. And it serves a great purpose for, as a chiminea. Mm -hmm. Is that like how a chiminea, uh-huh. And so that was kind of a nice night. It was nice because, as you people are learning who watch our channel rarely, there's a lot of wind out here. And in fact, there's a breeze. You know, probably three, four mile per hour breeze. So working around the wind is difficult at times because it does blow pretty hard at times. Having a fire is like that is problematic for us because we never know when the wind's going to kick up and spread it all over the landscape and burn the whole valley down. Even on a day like this, with very little breeze right now, all of a sudden you're inside the house and go boom, and it's a big gust that just comes up out of nowhere, and then that usually typically starts the afternoon, yeah, the afternoon wind storm. Wind storm. Yeah. <laughs> Generally speaking, we wake up before dawn or about dawn, and uh, there's very little wind. It's just a very slight breeze, you know, maybe a couple miles per hour or something like that. But then by about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's full-on wind, and that's when we you know, are learning to retire uh, to the shouse, go inside the shouse and do things that can be done in there. Second thing, um, we have engaged an architect to uh, you know, put the finishing touches on our home design. We got our first uh, you know, preliminary floor plan for the, you know, the finished product here this week and uh, we like it. We like it a lot. I mean, it's it's a design that we've been looking at for years and um, just needed a little tweaking and, you know, we're going to build this home ourselves. And because we're going to build this home ourselves, we're looking for simple ways to build. Uh, we're not contractors. You know, I have some experience in construction and have, you know, in my career have paid for enough construction to know what all these things, you know, what building a house involves. But, you know, for us in our 50s, uh, actually building a house, that's a lot of work for two people. And so the trick is to build something as simple as you can and still get everything you want. And so the design of this house uh, and its layout reflects um, a couple of things. One, something that we think we can build uh, out of two uh, totally sustainable materials like Adobe brick and straw bales and earthen plaster and things like that. Number three, it's passive solar. So, you know, it should regulate its own temperature throughout the season. And uh, four, it's gotta be buildable. Um, it's gotta be something we can do with the equipment we have at hand without having to buy too much more equipment and things like that. And five, we also ask that it be designed in such a way that if we if we don't feel like we can complete the entire project in one fell swoop it's sort of a split plan where we can do part of it and be able to occupy it legally and then um, finish the rest at a later date we're going to try to avoid concrete as much as we can uh, we're going to try to avoid um, synthetic materials as much as we can and uh, have a nice comfortable home. So. Number three, Echip has been talking to Chris with Homesteading the Hard Way about helping convert 
Dinah's Dina, uh, dynamo thing or whatever to a, an actual starter thing. I don't know. Not a starter thing. And if you have never seen Chris's channel, Homesteading the Hard Way, I'm going to put a link below in the description. I really encourage you guys to check Chris and Darlene's channel out. He is a straight shooter. He's a humble man. He's honest as the day is long. Anybody who thinks that, you know, doing this kind of life is easy or that you're just going to be able to buy everything and have instant homestead is in for a rude awakening. And so Chris is all about helping people understand uh, what it is really like to to operate an homestead, to grow your own food, to raise your own animals, to fix your own equipment, uh, things like that. And so he has been an incredible resource for me regarding Dinah, the Dinah hose, the back hose. The parts backhoe that we bought, I think I described in prior videos, is in better shape than Dinah is. So we plan to make that second uh, Dinah hoe the actual main working Dinah hoe because it came with a brand new crated engine that just needed to be, uh, you know, stuck in the new dyno. Hopefully it's just a matter of uh, dropping in the new engine, which I've almost got done, and then uh, firing it up and see how this dyno works. But if not, you know, I still have dyna that runs and uh, that we can continue to work with. Hopefully here within a week or 10 days, we'll have that thing up and running. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that bird, but it's driving me crazy to trying to figure out what kind of bird that is. Maybe you might know what kind of bird it is and can help me out because I spend lots of time in fruitless <laughs> searches on the internet trying to find that bird. We also have uh, two new additions to the homestead. You want to call them, Robert? We have Roscoe and Reba Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> we can't decide if her name's Reba or Pearl. Well, Maybe it's both. It is both. I like alliterations, and Roscoe, Roscoe and Reba really rolls off the tongue, but they were named Roscoe and Pearl by the kennel people, the animal shelter guys, and so we ended up liking the name Roscoe because he, Roscoe fits him, um, but we wanted to have names that kind of reflected a little bit more of a homesteading thing. We thought about Roscoe and Rio, and because I was like, her name is Rio. Um, but then I thought, well, that's not very homesteady. So Reba sounds really homesteady to me. And then if you add in that Pearl, Reba Pearl sounds really like a homestead name. Oh, I don't know where they went. I traveled out west of here uh, to my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada to visit family. And while I was out there, I visited with George at Iridium 242. If you have not checked out his channel, please do. He is great. He's been around for quite a while uh, on the YouTube uh, scene. And he's he's a prepper, um, but you know, he's, he's not really a militant type of prepper. He's all about helping people, you know, be ready for just about, you know, any kind of emergency or, or occurrence. Does a lot of product reviews. Uh, lately he's been doing a lot of flashlights and knives and things like that. I just bought Robert a flashlight that he uh, recently reviewed on his channel because the, the thing is this long and puts out 2300 lumens. Uh, light up the world. It is so, very, very bright. I love it's it. It's really cool. But, you know, he, he does things like that. He also has built several little things that, you know, sort of homespun things that people can do themselves. Um, to help themselves in a in an emergency power out and go, you know those kinds of things so we sort of collaborated on videos our last video was my interviewing George there at his place in Pahrump, Nevada and then um, George put a video out where we reviewed our off-grid medical kit so if you want to know how each chip and robber you know fix our how we fix our cuts and scrapes and uh, how we prepare for longer term and um, more serious needs and check out uh, the review of our medical, medical kit on Iridium's channel. Okay, another thing that we have here is I did this pretty much all by myself. I built a wood box because we had all of this wood, scrap wood just piled up around and 
We actually use quite a bit of it as we repurpose things and re rebuild and redo things. And so I was tired of it being scattered about. And so I made a repurposed wood box mm -hmm. out of some free pallets mm -hmm. that we found in town. It had some good hardware on it, we saw it, and Egypt was like, oh yeah, we're taking that one home because it has these really nice uh, kind of like L-shaped bracket things on it. We'll use those. And those are going to be usable. But I did that pretty much all by myself. Um, did a great I, job. Bro. I also built this now pretty much worthless little dog coop. Because, Dogs won't stay in it. Yes. And when I saw the size of his paws when we went and picked Roscoe up, I was like, oh, he'll never stay in that little pen. The compost bins that are just down the hill here where we've been composting our human air. Um, been struggling with that a little bit. Um, they're really not breaking down like they're supposed to. And the reason for that is because this climate is just so dry. Um, it's, just, it's hard to get that composting going if there's no moisture for those little microbes to swim in and hang around in. Been uh, dumping a lot of water onto them in order to hopefully you know, get that compost action going. Um, it may have helped a little bit, but I keep thinking, you know, if you have to dump water on a compost pile in order to get it to work, why not, if you have to waste good water that way, why not just have a flush toilet? You know, these are the kinds of things that go through my mind. That bird we were talking about is up on top of Dinah's boom over there singing. Hope you can hear it. If you can hear that call and know what bird that is, please tell us because we can't find it anywhere in any sources. <laughs> Plan is to, uh, you know, extend our gray water system off the shouts and maybe have it drain off into those compost bins to keep them moist because. Honestly, it requires about that much water. Um, we haven't been composting any of our vegetable waste or scraps or uh, coffee grounds, eggshells, any of that, mainly because of the other compost pile not composting. not composting. So I went ahead and just got a plastic tote that was sitting around. I put some water and dirt in the bottom of it, and I've been putting the uh, vegetable scraps and those kinds of things into that, putting the uh, hay over the top of it, and maybe we'll see if it breaks down. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but again, I it's by my uh, garden area, so I just put a little water in it when I water the garden. But who knows? We reached out to a channel that many of you know, Elf Lord's Journeys. Uh, Elf Lord and his wife, Hobbit Wife, uh, they have a channel where they document their little uh, travels and things like that, the places they go, mostly in the northwestern United States near where they live. And uh, Elf Lord also is a painter and sketch artist, he likes to do watercolor and sketches. And he's really great. He's very talented. I love his work. He's fun. <laughs> And so we reached out to him and we said, hey, uh, can we commission you for a project? And he said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> he said, never done it before. So we asked Elf Lord to sort of take our Feather Flower logo that we use for our channel and mix it up a little bit, see what he could do with it for us. And we just told him, you know, we're not going to give you any input other than that we want to keep the logo somehow and uh, just go for it. And so he, it was up to his imagination. Uh, whatever he did and he came back with four different patterns for us so this may be the last video you see with our old introduction uh you know our old hook video and and things like that that we use because we plan on using elf lord's work going forward at least this season so look forward to that and look forward to elf lord, lord's work and also i'm going to put a link to elf lord's and Iridium's uh, 242s in the description uh, so that uh, you can go see them if you've never seen them before. Great people. Uh, Elf Lord is so supportive of homesteads 
because he grew up on a homestead, I believe he said in Oregon. And uh, he's got a real heart for people like this, you know, like us who are starting out or who are, you know, making a go of it, growing our own vegetables and raising our own animals and, you know, living rurally and things like that. So, you know, it means so much to us that you guys subscribe, that you watch our videos, that you comment on them, even if the comments aren't favorable, um, we learn. And uh, we really enjoy the friendships that we're building through this. So we really value your comments, your likes, or your dislikes. Um, we value your watching and your hitting that bell for notifications. Um, we'd love it if you would tell other people about our video. We look forward to seeing more of you and hearing more of your comments. And thank you so much for watching. But right now, I'm going to finish my beer. <laughs> because it's my day off. <laughs> <laughs> He's been working very hard. <laughs> I'm going to go in and work on some video stuff, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.